It is time to answer your questions for Mail Call Thursday. My questions? My questions. Oh, oh okay. Well, Their questions, the listeners. Oh. It's time to uh, look at your comments and your Mail Call questions, and we're going to answer them. I'm Justin. And I'm JP. And we are the Podcasting Dead. We thank you oh so much for joining us on this lovely, beautiful, sunny Thursday. JP, how's your week been? Uh, my shoulder's a little goofy, but uh, other than that, we'll be all right. Welcome to older age. Like, you know, when you were a kid, you could sleep anywhere in the most jacked up positions ever and wake up feeling like a million bucks ready to go conquer the world. Now, you just sleep slightly laying on your arm and it's disabled for the next week. Yeah, man, it's it's very tight. Very but, tight. but we'll be all right. We'll be all right. It's time to answer your questions. As always, JP has them. Before we begin, uh, don't forget to uh, consider joining the Patreon. As we said, if you can't join it, trust us. We still love you, and we're still super stoked to have you join. Just listening and liking and all of that, you help us out a ton. But if you take it to the next step and you, you want to go to the Patreon, just know that is available uh, because we're working toward our goal of making this into – Two things. One, a video podcast, and two, a podcast that gives you stuff like merch and swag and things with, you know, cool t shirts and bandanas and koozies and stickers. So those are kind of our two goals to be video live by the end of the year and to start giving. Like, I would love to get to the point where we give out a prize pack once a week, you know, like once a week we pick mm-hmm. one person from blah, blah, blah. So, you know, patreon.com, just search for the wall, the podcasting dead. Don't search for The Walking Dead. I don't think they need any financial help. No, I think they're doing all right. But uh, just, Or you can click the link. But sometimes the link in the description can be a little bit sketchy. So if you're having trouble with that, just go to patreon.com and then search The Podcasting mm-hmm. Dead. You will find us. Yeah, I don't know why that link gets so wacky sometimes. But nonetheless. Moving forward, JP, what kind of questions we got? All right. First off, we got Jeep Jeep from five days ago. Jeep and, Jeep. Uh, Jeep Jeep says, oh, the kitty in the picture. Uh, talking about the picture on the video last week. Mm-hmm. Looks like my first cat did. I got her when I was like 10 and her name was Smokey. Mail call. What was your first pet? The only time I ever had any real crazy thing happen at a concert was at a Hell Yeah concert at the uh, House of Blues. The people in the pit were acting like such drunk a-holes. I got onto a fight with one. Uh, Security was cool to me, though. Instead of tossing me out the building, they sent me to the upper level, and I watched the rest of the show with one of their opening acts. Well, that's pretty cool. Oh, nice. Well, hey, I'm, you kick some ass, and then you you got uh, to still enjoy your night. I've I've had less fortunate events when physical altercations came up, and usually you have to leave. So, yeah. <laughs> good job for you, Jeep Jeep, and thank you so much for listening. You know we love you. But uh, yeah, my uh, the first pet I remember having was a a collie, and we we had that dog for for quite a few years. My first pet that was mine mine was a a chocolate lab named dancer i didn't Mm -hmm. name her that we got her when she was about a year old and she had already been named dancer and she responded to it so we were like ah we're not gonna confuse her with a new name it started off as a family pet but Mm -hmm. of course you know being the oldest and the one that got burdened with chores the most i was the one that you know fed her and cleaned her you know because she she was out she would be out all evening and night and then like during the day we we had that we've got this really cool because whenever you say you have a dog in a pen people are like oh and i'm like trust me i'm an animal person i wouldn't do that but we have a shed that's very shaded and all of that. And we had the case. So she, I had to clean out her crate and feed her and water and all that stuff. But she used to follow me on my four wheeler. Like I could ride two miles and she'd stay right behind me. Mm-hmm. And I could actually carry a lot of guilt about her death, um, which I won't get real sappy. It, was, right. it wasn't like I did anything to kill her, but she died basically following me, not on the mm-hmm. four wheeler. She basically, I went across the road and didn't chain her up like I should have or put her in her pen when I was going across the highway and I didn't realize she was following me and I get across the road and I hear skirt boom and I turn around and she's that's rough gotten hit um but yeah so she was my first pet she was wonderful she was a great great dog I always say if if dogs go to heaven I really hope she's I love my dog now but you know I know she's there but yeah I think dancer my parents had a lot of pets but none of them were actually like my first pet right I was a teenager then okay so Mm, golly, the shoulder is smarting. All right, uh, uh, five days ago again, create till death. Uh, just uh, thanks for the shout out, fellas. You're so, welcome. Yeah, That'll be two ninety nine. Yeah, <laughs> love you, create till death. Yeah, thanks for all of your posts and your support and your comments, man. We appreciate you. We do, we do indeed. Uh, Heidi L, 
Lapinel. Anyway, Heidi L, has anything so weird ever happened to you that you froze and your mind went totally blank? Happened to <laughs> Every me <once>. day. <laughs> yeah. Uh, many years ago, I went picking berries. Uh, that place was about a mile away, and easiest way was to walk first along the open area where the phone lines were. Uh, it was almost like a dirt road, so I didn't have to watch my steps, and I was focused on my phone and didn't see what was going on in front of me. Suddenly... I had a feeling that something was wrong. I stopped and looked up, and holy shite, uh, there was a moose staring at me. It was so close that our faces almost touched. I totally froze, and my mind went blank. The moose didn't move first either. It was just staring at me. Then suddenly it turned around and ran as fast as it could. Later, I realized that freezing was probably a good thing. Because if the moose had felt threatened, it could have attacked. And killed you, because mooses and elk don't play. Yeah, they're big old things. Big old animals. Yeah, that's pretty crazy. Um, it's crazy how your like your your fight or flight kicks in, mm-hmm. you know. Some yeah. people, you know, and I mean I, I don't know whose fight instinct would kick in in that moment, because how are you gonna fight a moose? <laughs> you know what yeah. I mean? <laughs> so you definitely probably did the best thing, which was stay still and just basically let the moose know that You know, I'm more scared of you than you are of me, and I'm not going to hurt you. Man, as many deer as we see around here, can you imagine if they were moose instead of deer? Oh, man, yeah. That'd be crazy. Which deer can tear your ass up, too, but deer just are far less likely to attack unless it's during the rut. Oh, yeah, man. man, Some some of these city deer that come around my house, man, they're so used to being around people. You can just be walking through your yard, and they'll be a few yards away, and not, you know, just not even mind. True story. A couple of years ago, I was sitting in a tree stand, and it was, you know, like normally when you go hunting, uh, there's only certain days you can kill does. Like mm-hmm. they have doe days, basically. Um, otherwise, it's mostly you can only kill bucks. Yeah. And I'm sitting in a tree stand, and it's a doe day. And uh, you know, most time I don't want to kill the mama deer, but I mean, as you go from buck to doe to younger i mean they get tender does i think have more tender meat than so i'm like i'm gonna get me i hadn't gotten nothing all season i was like i'm gonna put some meat in my freezer i see a doe walk under my in my stand and it's at a weird angle you know and i can't really get a shot where i want which is like right behind the shoulder so you know i'm like you know i whistle i sort of yeah. look up and kind of turn and when it does it looks right up at me and then it just starts walking up to the tree stand like not aggressively just kind of like she's like what's up what you doing Stared at me and to the point where, you know, and granted, my life don't depend on it. I mean, this was a walking dead. I'd have blew her ass to hell. Right. But, you know, I've got food at home. So, I mean, I'm sitting there and I, and I couldn't kill her. You know what I mean? Because she just was like, just staring up at me. She'd look around, look back up at me. And I'm just like, I can't. I can't. It's too, e- it's too easy. At this, you know what I mean? At yeah. this point, she's she's being, and I mean, I'm sure she's probably long dead. Some other hunter was like, hell yeah. Right. But I couldn't do it. Oh, I was man. like, man. Who knows? Could have been one of those deer that were like rescued as a little baby deer, and we're that's, just raised see, that's the people, stuff I know? think about. You know, like, yeah. um, and then, or it could have been totally like what I perceived to be her as being curious and friendly. Could have been like, bring your ass down. Yeah, <laughs> you, I'm gonna stomp your ass into the ground. Yeah, dude. Yeah, I, I don't know. that I've ever just like froze like that. I mean, it's probably happened, but I believe I saw like a mountain lion or something. I would freeze. Yeah. I don't know. I'm, I'm going to give that one some thought. I, uh, nothing's popping on the top of my head. You definitely don't want to run from a mountain lion, though. Like then You definitely would have made the right choice to not run or be aggressive. Like mm-hmm. with, Well, you do want to be aggressive with a mountain lion, but like you know, with a mountain lion, you do want to stand your ground and look right. big. Because if you turn and run, they say that's a big no-no. Yeah. You know? Luckily, I've never faced come face-to-face with a mountain lion. But they say <laughs> if you see one, you should stand your ground, speak in a loud, confident voice, and, like, if you have a jacket, spread it open. Make yourself look bigger because, you know, how cats and dogs are. Like, my dog, they have an instinct. If you turn and run, they chase you. You yeah. know I mean? Like, it's not even necessarily a, uh, I'm definitely going to kill you. It's just, I can't help it. You know what right. I mean? Like, this is what I'm programmed hmm. to do. So, it's crazy how different animals require different, uh, you know, reactions. It's a dangerous world out there, I'll tell you. Yeah. All right, uh, Brianne McCann, five days ago, and I don't know if this was a coordinated or just a coincidence, but uh, Brianne says, Hi, guys. First off, please send some good thoughts to my moose. He was admitted to the hospital yesterday, and I'm really hoping that he gets better. Mail call. Have you guys seen the new Spider-Man yet? I took my son last week, and it was everything and more. Love the actor that plays Spider-Man, and it didn't spoil too much in-game for me since I have yet to see it. LOL, don't hate. Enjoy your weekend, and I'm loving the baby pics, Justin. She's growing like a weed. That, that, oh. I cut my mic off by accident. 
Yep, that she is. She is growing some kind of fast and definitely sending uh, thoughts to your good vibes to Moose. Hopefully everything goes well, which that comment was posted five days ago. So hopefully by now yeah. uh, he's fine and everything's went good. If um, you know, But um, you got to see Endgame. What you doing, man? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Not hating, but you got to see it. It's one of the best movies. I've, it's, it, I think Infinity War and Endgame are the two best movies in the Marvel franchise. Yeah, and Endgame's been out for a hot minute now, too. It actually went away and came back. Yep. <laughs> so, yeah, make the time. It's totally worth it. But, yes, we did see the... Um, Spider-Man we actually went together to see yeah. the new Spider-Man. We took a really long lunch break. Yeah, <laughs> and it was, it was ter- I thought it was terrific. It was fantastic, fantastic. I I, I loved it. I loved it, loved it, loved it. Um, I, th- I told JP, I said, taking away the group movies like mm-hmm. Avengers and, uh, you know, like any of the civil event, taking away like Civil War, Avengers, Endgame, Infinity War, and uh, Age of Ultron, which are all kind of like a collection of all yeah, of them, yeah. like single movies. This might be my favorite like single character Marvel movie, you know what I mean? Yeah, man, it's definitely up there. It's they, hard to top Captain America: Winter Soldier, which has been a long-standing favorite of mine. But this one had everything. Yeah, I loved man. it. They really knocked it out of the park with that one. So, and Tom Holland is a wonderful Spider-Man. Oh yeah, yeah, just nails it. Uh, Brand McCann also says you guys can keep doing what JP has been and uh, going through people's comments throughout the week, kind of like a review, sorta, of everything we heard, and you guys responding to our thoughts. Just an idea. I'm confused. What now? Uh, basically, just like a weekly recap where we uh, review what we've talked about and go through comments. And we do that now. Uh, I guess to an extent. I thought the only time we went through comments was mail call, <laughs> unless that was something we were addressing, like in another podcast. But yeah, we could definitely do like a weekly recap. Yeah, yeah. I think that's what she's uh, recommending. Just kind of like a best of the week kind of. Because she segment. says doing what we're doing what. Doing what JP has been and going through. Yeah, and that's probably me uh, reading weird. But yeah, I think she just wants me to, you know, kind of filter through some comments. And, uh, you know, let's kind of just, like we said, just recap stuff we've talked about throughout the week. So, yeah. Good. Uh, that's a good idea. All right. And uh, Brian lastly says, uh, don't fully extend that arm, Justin. Keep that tension on the bicep. Hashtag no dad bod. You preaching to the choir, sister. Where, where I messed up, where I messed up was, as you know, you know from listening, I've just gotten back in the last few weeks into working out. And where I screwed up was, I know, I mean, I've been, you know, working out, you know, steadily for like four years now. Well, five years now. It's hard to believe. I mean, aside from like times in the past when I lifted. So I've lifted a lot. And like, I know you don't do the same muscle group two days in a row. Like, you, yeah. you know, if you're going to do arms today, then tomorrow, maybe do some abs and legs. You, you, you try to avoid hitting. But my stupid ass, my stupid ass, I did bicep and triceps and my arms are fine after that. You know what I mean? Like they had, you know, a good burn. Not that like, oh, something's wrong burn. Just like a, yeah, man, I really got a good workout. So then my week was really tight. And I was like, man, tomorrow is the last day I have to get in the gym this week. And I never got around to shoulders. And I really want to work shoulders. I'm going to do shoulders the day after. That's that's a different muscle group. And it is, but it's not. I mean, as I was lifting, I remember thinking, oh, yeah, I can feel tension on my triceps. Yeah. It was more a pain in my tricep than my bicep because I'm like, oh, this is a big mistake. And I, I went a little too hard. And so I paid the price for like yeah. six days. My elbow and my tricep were just on fire. But now we are back to... Back to normal, but you're right. You definitely, if anybody's working out, you want to make sure that you don't fully extend that arm. Mm-hmm. Keep the you don't want to deactivate a muscle too. If you, right. if you fully extend and deactivate a muscle, and you don't keep tension on it, it's not going to grow. Yeah, not as fast as you want, anyways. All right, uh, Corey Andros. Four days ago, see guys, concerts, alcohol, and having to having to piss always lead to interesting events. I will be sure to keep you guys updated on the stand up comedy ongoings. Uh, hashtag safe mail call. Are you fans of Stranger Things? Season three was a fun ride. I love Stranger Things, and I love season three. I binged it last Friday. Well, no, I guess Friday before last. I guess it was Friday before last. Yeah, God, man, when you get old, time flies by. Yeah, man, but, yeah. I, I still haven't finished season three. I promise. Have you started it? Yeah, I'm about halfway through. I just uh, you like it so far? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I love how it, it's very different from the other seasons. I like that they don't just give you the same recycled thing mm-hmm. every time. So yeah, I really dug season three. Yeah, so hopefully I'll finish that this weekend. We will see. Uh, Agent X seventeen three days ago. I'm going to upload a video about the problem of Walking Dead community. 
could you guys please check it out on my channel if you guys have the time. Get your popcorn ready. It's going to be a long one. Yeah, man. Is it up now? Um, I'm, I hadn't seen that comment before today, so I didn't go. Ch- is it, if it's up now, let us know. We're happy yeah. to. Uh, we'll make sure we comment and we'll yeah, go check it out. Check that out. Uh, Ethan Lequay, two days ago, mail call. All right, guys, is it just me or does Scott Gimple uh, seem to always draw stories out and ruin seasons? I mean, look at seven and eight and uh, Fear Season 5. I hope this isn't a foreshadowing of the Rick movies. Hopefully, he blows us away with those. You know. I'm hoping that we get blown away with those. Yeah, and uh, you definitely don't have any Scott Gimple fans around here. No, uh, Scott Gimple just kind of uh, is, should not be show running anything. No. And like you said, yes, season seven and eight uh, were and in and, and, and fear of season. I mean, they were so draw season. The Walking Dead, we've said it a million times, but I'm going to say it again. Season six should have ended with Negan killing Abraham and Glenn. It should not have been a cliffhanger. It should have ended there. Season seven should have been all out war in one season. We did not need two seasons for that. Season, uh, the first half of the season, the first eight episodes should have been, you know, Rick submitting to Negan and like, th- you know, you feel like Rick's finally met his match and. Just have you going, why is Rick being such a bitch about all of this? And then the midseason finale should have been that point where they all were like, we're going to fight back. And then it should have, you know, the la- the the second half, the last eight episodes should have been them winning the war. Yeah, All Out War should have been one of the, some of the best episodes of the whole truly, show. And he truly. just totally screwed the pooch. So thanks exactly for nothing, Scott right. Campbell. Exactly right. All right. Uh, Jovi Gal, a mere 18 hours ago. Because I need for mail call to keep being a thing, what are your favorite and least favorite fast food chains? And what do you like to order when you indulge? I'm one of those scary vegans, so I don't really do fast food anymore, save for hot chips. But if I'm uh, caught short, I'll go for a veggie delight at Subway. But I don't like paying so much more for a meatless, cheeseless sub. It's just not the same as a meatball sub. Uh, Jovi Gal. Let me see if I can answer for you. See how well I know right, you. I right. think your favorite fast food. I mean, as far as just like you, like you know, you might have some you like a little bit more, but I feel like your your go to is Burger King. Yeah, I do like Burger King. It's a guilty pleasure. Yeah. I, I think at the end of the day, I do think Wendy's has a better quality burger, so I, I like Wendy's as well. But uh, definitely my least favorite, just cause what it does to my insides, is Taco Bell. That's Which is a, probably your favorite. So, what would you would you say would you say Wendy's or Burger King's your favorite? Man, it's tough, dude. It's t- I mean, I feel like Burger King's still your favorite because that's where you go. I see you go to Burger King way more than I see you go to Wendy's. Yeah, I mean, I if I'm really if I'm if I'm willing to spend more than five bucks, I'll go to Wendy's and get like a, a Dave's classic single. But right. if I'm balling on a budget, keeping it under five dollars, that uh, that BK value thing that Burger King has, two burgers, fries, and a drink, man, you can't beat it. I, f- I feel you. So basically, Wendy's, I, I'm the same way sometimes with Taco Bell. Cause you know, Taco Bell can be pricey. So sometimes you, you don't always go to your favorite just because you try to save a little bit of money. But at the end of the day, if you have your choice, that's you you would probably rather go to Wendy's. Man, it's it, it's tit for tit, man. It's it's really hard for me to say I like one more than the other. And I, I can't forget about Chick-fil-A, man. I love, oh, I love Chick-fil-A, some Chick-fil-A. But, I know that I'm going to be dropping some money at Chick-fil-A, but, I mean, it's worth it. It's really good quality food. My favorite is definitely Taco Bell, without a shred of doubt. There is no fast food restaurant that I I love more than – when I was a kid, you know how, like, when you were a kid, your mom would take you, like, to Chuck E. Cheese and different places to eat on your birthday? Mm-hmm. I mean, I did go to Chuck E. Cheese, but there were several birthdays where my mom's like, where do you want to go eat? I was like, Taco Bell. My mom's like, you don't want to go somewhere a little nicer or somewhere with some games or whatever? I'm like, no, Taco Bell. And – so Taco Bell is my absolute favorite. Now, she did ask, what's your least favorite, too, right? So Taco Bell, for me, is my favorite. JP, what is your least favorite fast food? No, no, my least favorite is Taco Bell. Oh, that's... <laughs> yeah. So my... and, and, and you know what, JP, such a good friend. There are times where we're riding around and we're like, what do we want to get to eat? And I'll be like, Taco Bell? And JP's like, yeah, and he'll suck it up and order something. So yeah, I very I mean, much appreciate that. It's not that I don't like Taco Bell. It just does not agree with You me. don't like what it does. I don't think it agrees with anybody's body. Yeah, I mean, it'll ruin the rest that of That horse day, meat will so. tear your insides up. Yeah. So. But I do love my Taco Bell. I think my least favorite fast food... I don't want to say McDonald's because even though I'm I, I go there rarely, when I do go there, I love a Big Mac. A Big Mac's hard yeah, to beat. 
I like a quarter pounder sometimes. I definitely um, eat there the least, though, uh, next to Taco Bell. I think the reason why I eat there the least is because when I first started working where, I, where we work, you know, it's right there. It's Seriously, you could almost walk to the McDonald's. Mm-hmm. And I ate there every single day for like two years straight. So I yeah. think it's, I just got burned out on McDonald's. But I don't know, man. My least favorite. Where's somewhere I hate to go? Now you got me pondering here. Fast food that I hate to go I hate, to. I can't say there's anywhere we just like. Uh, maybe Hardee's. Hardee's? So yeah, I, yeah, say, I don't. I bet you probably don't like. Hardee's. I don't like Hardee's that much. I mean, I'm not gonna say there's not something from Hardee's I can get, but now the grilled cheeseburger at Hardee's is banging. That's one of the best things I've had in a while. But with that said, I hardly ever go to Hardee's. Yeah, it's never really my choice. For our uh, friends out west, that would be Carl's Jr. Yeah. So. Yeah. But yeah, there you go. Love you, Jovi gal. Keep eating those kiwis, even though I know a kiwi over there. So you're not talking about the fruit. You're talking about the bird. But love you. All right. uh, (laughs) And thanks for the follow on Twitter. All right. Cindy, uh, with the last name, I'm not even going to try to say a prepusich. Can I I pause real quick? Yeah. Comments like this one are what will keep mail call alive. Like these, this this comment JP is about to read. Like this is so fun. Like the these are the, this is awesome. So if we can get or Cindy, if you'll just ask this type of comment every every mail call, we'll keep it going just for that. And uh, Cindy, I'd also like to thank you, our newest patron. So Cindy, you're entered in to win the prize pack. Oh, thank you. And Cindy. Uh, we're gonna shower you with uh, kisses right here and now. Just that's a that's a new segment. <laughs> Showering you with kisses with and kisses. love. Yeah. So thank you, Cindy. We love you. Um, 13 hours ago. Hey, fellas. Hope summer is treating you well. Here are some mini questions for your answering pleasure and for my entertainment. Justin, you want me to just hit these with you rapid fire? What? How you want to do this? Because mm. I don't like any of these things. So. Yes, you do. <laughs> yes, you do. Um, uh, I, I tell you what. Just go one by one and we'll both answer. All right. Uh, pancake or waffle? Um, For me, it's a waffle all day long. Yeah, I'm going to go with waffle, too. It holds your butter better. Yeah, it's just delicious. Syrup. My grandmother used to make the best homemade waffles off a, uh, a waffle iron older than both of us put together. Waffles are like very friendly pancakes. They're like, hey, buddy, want me to hold that butter and that syrup for you? And they do it so well. Now, I like honey on my waffle. I, I, I can do I can down with honey, which I will say, I do like pancakes, too, though. It's not yeah, to say oh, I don't yeah, like yeah. a pancake, but if I have my choice, I'm going to go waffles. Absolutely. And they're a little more filling, I feel. Yeah. All right. Uh, beer or mixed drink? I go with beer. Uh, if by mixed drink, that can because when I think mixed drink, I'm thinking like a Bloody Mary or a Sex yeah, on the but Beach. That, but that if, if that includes like, a like, Jack and Coke yeah. or a rum and Coke, then I'm going to go with mixed drinks, uh-huh. even though more often than not, I stick with beer. Because if I have mixed drinks, you know, after three or four, I'm going to start getting pretty tipsy. <laughs> Whereas with beer, man, I'll go through a 12 pack and be like, let's keep going. So, yeah. But uh, uh, cards or board game, I, I really don't enjoy either, to be honest. Cards. All right. Uh, if I had to pick, I guess I'd go with board game. You, like, like I said, I really don't enjoy either one. You know number four is going to be a really tough one for me. Yeah, ocean or mountains. That's me. so tough. I'm a, I'm a mountain guy. I mean, I, I do like swimming in the ocean, but the sand, the sun, man, I just, you know, I'm a hairy guy. Sand is not a friend when you're covered in body hair. So, uh, yeah, I'm going with the Try uh, some the baby mountains. powder. Next time you go, take baby powder. Like, it won't, yeah. I'm still like, I don't know if you've ever used that or not, but baby powder, we take it with us every time we go to the beach. And what you do is if you're covered in sand, mm-hmm. instead of washing off, baby powder makes sand come off of you. Right. You take the baby powder and just rub it in and rub it up and down your arms and your legs, and you'll be amazed at how all of the sand just falls mm-hmm. off. It basically takes away the sand's ability to stick to you. Huh. I guess it dries it out, more or less, right? Yeah. Um, because I guess your sweat and your moisture is what keeping oh, it dude, on I you. I hate even thinking about it. Yeah, mountains for me. Every day. That's tough, uh, Cindy, because anyone that knows me knows my favorite place on planet Earth is is the ocean. But that's more of like a leisure thing. Like I love to kick back on a beach with a drink and just listen to the music and, and have the waves going. Um, so ocean is like my paradise. But I tr- I love the mountains. Like I love staying in the mountains. And JP has been with me before. I love hiking mountains. Mm-hmm. So. Oh my gosh! I mean, that's that's really hard. I mean, I feel like I should choose mountains almost because they keep. I actually, I actually physically exert myself in the mountains. Like it's good exercise and it's healthy. Whereas the ocean is very unhealthy because I just sit on my ass and, yeah, and drink but, a lot. You know, I, I've heard you say more times than not you'd, you'd love to live down there at the beach. 
You're right. I've never heard you say, you know, you'd love to live in the mountains. No, I'd love to visit the mountains, yeah. but I'd love to live at the beach. So, yeah, I'm going to go with ocean, which sucks because if you get towards the coast, you're not going to have many mountains. No, no. <laughs> I can't have both, yeah. you know. Yeah. But, yeah, I'll go with ocean, but I have a lot of love for the mountains. No, oh, yeah. Uh, honesty or others' feelings? Mm. Now, that's a tough one. Others' feelings. And I say that. I mean, would you say I'm brutally honest or would you say that I try to I mean, make sure I don't hurt people's feelings? I mean, I, th- I think we both have a lot of tact. I mean, you know, you can be uh, blunt if you need to be, and sometimes we all have to be. But, no, I mean, I think we're we're both civilized enough to where we'll say others' feelings. Yeah, I mean, I, I try. I would just rather avoid hurting someone's feelings or upsetting someone if I don't have to. If right. It's not absolutely necessary because who's got time for that drama? Yeah, man, for sure. Uh, baseball or football? You can answer this for both of us. Uh, neither for me. I don't, I mean... I guess if I had to, I'd rather sit and watch a baseball game. But I really, I, I'm not a sports guy, so I really don't care. What do you think the answer is for me? Uh, I, you got that uh, that Red Sox sticker, so I, I would say baseball. I've said many times it shows how much JP doesn't pay attention. I've said many times that I don't really keep up with football, but yeah. I love, love, love baseball. So baseball yeah. for me. Yeah, I won't go. Uh, won't go with that. Uh, big party or small gathering? Now that depends on what kind of mood I'm in. Yeah, I agree. I mean, there really depends. I, I think more often than not, small gathering. But keep in mind, our small gatherings include anywhere from eight to twenty people. Mm-hmm. So uh, some people might consider twenty people a, a, a party, whereas with us, that's still part, kind of a small gathering. I think more often than not, small gathering. But I do sometimes get in the mood where I just want to go to a big party with a ton of people and just you know. Yeah, and if it's a big party, I want it to be somewhere where I, I don't know anyone. I can just, likewise, you know be crazy and not care who sees me like go to a club out of town where you don't know anyone and just cut loose because my dance moves are horrendous and i don't like to do them in front of people that know me yeah uh dog or cat dog a cat for me just because they're really low maintenance very self-sustaining animals yeah they really are you can just kind of as long as you keep that poop scooped and uh food and water down they're good my sister has two children one on the way Right. Mm -hmm. And she wanted to get a pet for the kids. And she's already tried dogs before back in the day. And Mm -hmm. dogs require more work. You have to clean up after them more. And I mean, you have to clean up after cats, but it's all in one place. You don't have to train them. Once you show them the litter box, more often than not, they're going in the litter box. They go eat. They take care of themselves. They clean themselves everything. And she's not really an animal person, but she wanted her kids to have a pet. And I told her, I said, get a cat. I said, a cat is far better for you because it requires way less maintenance. Like, basically, when you get that cat, you show it where the litter box is, and you can go to work the next day, and that cat's probably going to be fine. Whereas a puppy, and then she still went ahead and got a beautiful Australian shepherd um, a couple of months ago. And now she's already like, I'm probably going to have to find him a new home. And I said, I tried to tell you. I tried to tell you that puppies... And that's why you should have stu- – she still has the cat. But I was like, if you wanted another pet, you should have got another cat. You know, yeah. she's got a decent-sized house. I was like, cats are far better. But, yeah, so I, far better for that for her, yeah, you know. Yeah. But, yeah, I'm a dog person. Yeah. Um, and I love dogs, too, by the way. I've, I've had many dogs I was very close to. So, uh, cake or pie? I'm a cake man. I'm with you, cake. I actually had a delicious uh, hot fudge cake at Bubba's yesterday, man, you know, where it's like – Cake, then a layer of ice cream, then a layer of cake, then another layer of ice cream, all covered in hot fudge, man. I had um, I had a Butterfinger something, and it was like um, uh, my girlfriend's mom fixed this weekend, and it was like layered, and it had like what's that fluffy bread that they sometimes put in in mm-hmm. cakes? Um, one not Wonder Bread, is it? Um, uh-huh. It's some kind of bread, like breading you find in cakes, but it was like a layer of like whipped cream and. Mm-hmm. And then like a layer of that, and like I don't oh, like angel food. Your angel food about. cake, yeah, that's angel it. Yep, cake. and then it was layered, but that was really good too. Yeah. Uh, and last but not least, cups in the cupboard, right side up or upside down. I, I I keep mine upside down. I'm always afraid of of bugs crawling up in them and it's, stuff. Yeah, it's so funny because I am an upside. Like when I had my apartment, everything in my cabinets was upside down. In fact, if you go down to my man cave, everything. Like I have a little mini bar, and on top of the bar, the cups that are there are um, they're right side up, but that's because they're decorative mm-hmm. and they go with the decanter. It's like a globe decanter, and it, the cups have that. So if you flip them upside down, it kind of is pointless to have them there because it just takes away from the whole setup. But all the cups in the drawer, like the little section beneath it, which are actually the ones people use the most, I keep those upside down. But I, my girlfriend keeps hers right side up. So now that I'm living with her, we're living together. Like now, most of ours are right side up. But I, I use, I think, I don't know, are they? 
Yeah, I think she keeps them right side up, but I always kept them upside down just because I felt like it kept them cleaner in the long run. Yeah. But yeah, that's uh, that's me. That's it. Uh, is that it for the YouTube? Uh, I found a uh, a mail call on uh, Wednesday's podcast. I guess yesterday. Yeah, you man. Could call it. Let's hear it. Uh, Eternal Wreck mail call. Are y'all fans of Quentin Tarantino's films? And if so, what's your favorite movie? I love him. Do you yes, love him? I love him too. I'm really stoked for his Star Trek movie. I hope that doesn't fall through. Uh, stoked for Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. That's what it's called, right? Yep. And uh, my favorite, uh, like. I think it goes without saying Pulp Fiction is his masterpiece, but I think my favorite's always going to be uh, Reservoir Dogs. I really think Hateful Eight was one of my favorites. Oh yeah, that one was. Hateful great Eight too. was one. It was. I mean, I love the Kill Bills though. So it's like you said, it's really it's really hard to pick for me. Anyways, a favorite Tarantino film because I liked all of them. Django Unchained was mm-hmm. badass. Um, Kill Bill was badass, but Hateful Eight just had so many people in it that I like. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like yeah, it's Samuel L. Jackson, Kurt Russell. Like it was just a good film. Oh yeah, dude, it was it was fantastic. Uh, we have another mail call on the uh, Fear podcast from Monday. Sure, if you like. Yeah, uh, let's see here. And when we get done, I've got one from Facebook too. All right, uh, Jonas uh, Balili, mail call. I would say to save the show, uh, Fear merge temporarily with the Whisper War. Alicia fly off in the helicopter to be saved by the CRM, uh, Sans Rick, and go to the Walking Dead movies. After the Rick movies end, what if Rick ends up on fear? Have Daniel versus Dwight. Let's say Abraham was Daniel's friend in the past uh, that helped him take over the warehouse. A surprise return of Madison, and she's trying to find Alicia with Strand and company. Uh, if Madison does come back, we find out she's related to Rick. Uh, not really a question, but uh, yeah, some you know some stuff that very well could could save the show. Yeah, I agree with almost all of that. Would be awesome. I definitely uh, think it would be really cool to bring some of them over for the Whisperer War. Like mm-hmm. somehow they're they're traveling and they just get kind of caught up in it. You know, I think yeah. that would be awesome. Let's see one more podcast. Current events Tuesday. Let's see if any. I wish we could look up hashtag mail call like somewhere and it would just show all the mail calls. You know, like on Twitter or something. You know how you yeah. do that? Oh, I already. Oh shucks! I'm sorry, y'all. I'm sorry. Cur- Oh, is that in a different? Uh... Oh boy, so professional I am. Fear the what, Walking what Dead. What about random rambling Wednesday? Did anybody comment on the one last week or this week? As far as like with a question. Let's see. Oh shucks. You want me to do the Facebook one while we while you look around? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Go ahead. All right. So let's head over to Facebook where we got a message from our good friend Derek Patterson. He says, uh, "Good morning, fellas. I figured I'd toss a few questions your way. We've actually got a few things in common." Uh, I've toyed with stand up a little bit. Uh, who are your three favorite comedians in no particular order? Mine was uh, Doug Stanhope, uh, Greg Giraldo, and Dave Chappelle. Next, well, before we move to the next question, first, my favorite three stand ups would probably ju- be George Carlin, Mitch Hedberg, and Dave Chappelle. JP, who would yours be? Uh, I like uh, I like old George Carlin quite a bit. I like old. Um I grew up loving uh, Jerry Seinfeld, so that had a big influence on me. I don't, What's the deal with Bull? <laughs> yeah, I mean his like his style of comedy really isn't what I you know go in for, but you appreciate and enjoy yeah, it. and he did he did have a, a big influence on me. Uh, I love Artie Lang. I love. Um, you only get three now. Oh shit! I could I could build a big list. There's tons of comedians that I, I love. It's just Dave Chappelle, Mitch Hedberg, and George Carlin. Another one that almost makes my uh, top three is who's the guy? He's always pissed. Bill Burr. I think Bill Burr is freaking hilarious just because he don't care, man, and he's always going off on something. But yeah. um, but uh, definitely top three for me would be uh, Carlin, Hedberg, and uh, Dave Chappelle. But so, what are your top three? You don't have to be in any order, but just top three. I'll, I'll, I'll just keep it with them. You, so you said Carlin, and uh, Seinfeld, and who was the other one? Artie Lang. Artie, and I believe me, I'll probably as soon as we're done, I'll think of three I like better. But no doubt, uh, since my gears are grinding a little slower this morning, I will uh, stick with that. I like Dave Chappelle a lot for the same reason I like George Carlin because a lot of their stuff is so clever. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like it's, it's a lot more than it appears on the surface. Why I like Mitch Hedberg is because his comedy was so simple. I mean, it just was he yeah. got up there and basically told jokes. But it worked, you know. He just had a great persona and just had a good stage presence. Even though he actually what made his stage presence so good was that he had such bad stage fright, you know. So, yeah. 
I love. He said, uh, "I used to do a lot of drugs, and I mean, I still do, but I, I used to too." Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, yeah. One of my favorite bits he did, it's so simple, but he did it on a late night show, but what he was talking about, he goes, I saw a commercial the other day for re, uh, repossessed houses. Man, those must be hard to sneak away. He said, how do you do? Do you like go to the door and you go knock, knock, excuse me, sir, could you go cut your grass and then look that way for about 30, 45 minutes? Yeah. It just was so simple, but yeah, it just, yeah. it just, it cracked me up, man. I, I get so much joy from watching his old clips. Oh yeah, man. Good stuff. Uh, one more. Oh, well, he's got more. Hold on. Oh, Let me finish okay, up with okay. uh, Derek, and then we'll get to that one. Um, next question. What about your three favorite podcasts? Mine would be yours. Oh, JRE and a humble little one from Utah called Freshly Jacked with this super cute dude named Derek. Oh, so you have a podcast, Derek. I'll have to check that out. Hmm. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and say yours would be one of my favorites. I really, believe it or not, we podcast, but I really don't listen to that many podcasts. Yeah, man, I, uh, ooh, that, that's tough. Uh, I like, like Joe Rogan, which is in large part thanks to JP, because JP's a, a big Joe Rogan fan, so I've listened to some stuff that JP has, you know, got yeah, me turned man, on to. Yeah, I, I love Joe Rogan. I love the Church of What's Happening Now. I love uh, Veritas Radio, uh, Hardcore History with Dan Carlin. That's really good stuff. Do they give us a limit on No, on no, no, no. Just like, well, did he say? Yeah, he did say your three favorite podcasts. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, shoot. Yeah, Joe Rogan, I think he's a great interviewer. Uh, I really, man, more than, I, I really miss uh, uh, Joey Diaz, man. He used to do a Periscope that was awesome. It was called The Morning Joint, man. He's not on there no more? No, no, he's not anymore, which really sucks because it was really oh, I great. I used to love Joey Coco Diaz, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah, dude. Yeah, I used to love him. Yeah, man, love uh, love that. Like I said, it, it depends a lot on what uh, what mood I'm in. Yeah, because no I mean, like I said, I really think right now for me, Joe Rogan's the best interviewer. But you know, when it comes to conspiracy stuff, man, like Crow Triple uh, Seven lays down a lot of truth, uh, or you know, a lot of interesting stuff. Uh, Veritas Radio, he's he's got a very Art Bell coast to coast AM kind of feel. See, I loved Art Bell, and actually, you know what? Which I, it's not a podcast. I know it's on the radio, but I do listen a lot to uh, George Nori. I love yeah, coast I'm to coast you, AM. Man, I wish you'd listen to some of those uh, Veritas I'd be sending you. I man. will. He, I've uh, listened to one or two that you sent me because I always. If you send me a podcast, odds are I listen to. I lo- I actually love listening to, uh, to talk. Yeah. On the way home, a lot of times what I'll do instead of listening to music is I'll find like a top 10 list, like top 10 scary true mm-hmm. life Reddit story, you know, something like that. And I'll listen to narrations yeah, on the way man. home. Like our, our job has to do so much with music. By the time I get in the car, man, I, it's just the last thing I right, hear. Right. But, uh, no, man, Veritas Radio, dude. Some of his stuff, like the guests he's had talking about the Rothschild family, uh, Flat Earth. All kinds of stuff, dude. And like I said, whether you buy into anything they're saying or not, they're very well thought out uh, arguments. Which is the it's, way our woke podcast is going to be. Yeah. And uh, I, I forget the guy with a Veritas radio, but he's got just a very seductive voice. He's like a Spaniard. And, oh, yeah. So and keep yeah. in mind when we do woke podcasts, sometimes I am going, I'm going to warn you ahead of time. I'm going to play devil's advocate because sometimes there are questions just because I'm asking JP questions about a conspiracy theory that sounds like I don't believe it doesn't necessarily mean I'm not giving it credence. Sometimes you have to play devil's advocate to get these questions. You know what I'm saying? Like, well, it's, that's it's, what Joe Rogan does. Right. It's not, uh, it's not super interesting. So, you know, all that, a lot, especially for things that you've already heard a lot of when somebody's just laying out. There, you know, I mean, sometimes you got to yeah, challenge man. it with questions yeah, to really man. dig in deep and get some good, you yeah. know, that's something radios kind of taught me. You got to yeah, dig man. in there to get some really. Yeah, I'm, I'm juicy. sure there's there's a lot of stuff you're not going to believe in, you know, at all. But I'm going to lay down, you know, what I've gathered, and you. Well, there's have. a lot of stuff that you talk about that I know you don't believe in. You just you give you give it a thought. You know what I mean? Like you right. give it you give the. You give it some, uh, and there's a lot of the things that you you do believe. We both believe. I don't believe the Earth's flat, but at the end of the day, I do totally believe in the idea of like a total uh, government attempt to misinform to see how they can spread misinformation in the time where they may need it. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? To make themselves look better or to make someone look out to be the bad guy. You know, what I mean, so I totally believe. Yeah, in things man. Like and that. I, I'm trying to round up some uh, special expert guests, so hopefully that'll happen. People. It's weird, man. Like people talk to you about this stuff just like for on and on and on. You know, you run into them at the bar, at work, or whatever. But comes time to put a mic in front of them that they're just you know they, oh, they yeah. get shy real quick. You need to get with your buddy Matt Crowder uh, and see if he'll come by in the afternoon next Wednesday. 
and let us get one supernatural podcast from him. If I can yeah. get one more, I'll start releasing them. Yeah, man. Like I said, we should, if nothing else, do an early release on Patreon. That's a good idea. Yeah. And we might start doing that for the Patreon because Jeep Jeep had a good point in one of her comments. She was like, please don't take away Random Rambling Wednesday because I want to be a Patreon, but right now I just can't really afford it. And mm-hmm. so it's like, you know, and I understand that completely. Uh, you know, yeah. uh, it feels, you know, you got priorities and we're just a YouTube podcast. So maybe what we'll start doing is maybe releasing stuff early on the Patreon and then you'll get it maybe a few days later on the YouTube. You know, yeah. some incentive to where like if you're page, because that's the challenge of Patreon. If people are donating to your podcast or to your channel, you want to give them some incentive like that they're not just throwing money into something they don't have to. You want there to be some kind of, you know, like reward and incentive to do it. But at the same time, we know that not everybody at the moment can be a patron and we don't want to make them feel like we're leaving them out. So it's yeah, kind dude. of finding that balance. That's the challenge. Well, you know what Veritas Radio does? And it drives me crazy. So in a way, I don't want to do it. But he'll give you like it's a two hour interview. You can get the first hour on YouTube and then you have to be a subscriber on his website to get like the full two hour interview. I mean, we could, you know, kind of cut uh, random, random Wednesdays in half, or we could do our normal thing and then come back to it later and actually pop a few tops and drink a little bit and yeah. launch back. It, we'll, we'll figure some cool way out to do it to where we're taking care of our, our YouTube folk and we're taking uh, care of our Patreon. And Jeep Jeep, consider too, or for anyone else that feels that way, consider too that most of it really won't be that different because our random rambling Wednesdays always end up pretty much being like a woke Wednesday as it is, which is why we kind of made the decision like we're going to start doing woke Wednesday because, you know, where it was originally designed, like we were just going to get on there and talk about whatever, we found that we're not that interesting and it's hard to keep just no, small talk going. So typically it goes to conspiracy stuff, which always ends up being the majority of what we do. So it won't be that different, honestly. Yeah, and Wednesdays, I, I don't know, last few weeks I've just... Uh, it's, we oh, had man. one titled The Most Boring Podcast Ever. <laughs> yeah, man, and just stuff going on. It's just been stuck yeah. in my head and sometimes, yeah, I, I don't know. I don't we know. all have our days, brother. It's okay. No, nah, it's, okay. it's just like, you know, I need to, I guess I need to get back to where I'm I'm venting a lot more and being more open with the listeners and the podcast, which I try to be. But sometimes, man, you know, when you're dealing with it in life, you just, you get in here and you don't even want to talk about it because, you know, it's, you know. I used to be that way, man, because JP's been in radio for what, going on two years now? Uh, September will be the uh, two-year anniversary of my uh morning show i was in radio doing bit stuff before that but yeah i'll have a morning show two years in september and that also marks the two years since i had sex with uh well someone who doesn't bear mentioning that you're with now no 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 uh, you you would know who i'm talking about oh i do yeah the last time i was inside of her was the uh the night before i came in here and did my first ever morning show is also the least satisfying uh rendezvous we ever had Wow. Well, anyway. and uh, that, that would, thanks for that. Uh, but no, I think that's just something uh, that being in radio for over a decade has helped me do because you've heard me in here mad or like, son of a blah, 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 yeah. and then cut on the mic and be like, it's a wonderful blah, 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 blah. Hope you're having a great afternoon. So like, you know, as you get into it, you'll learn to kind of put things on, weighing on your mind kind of in the back burner. Like they're there, but then, you know, it'll, right. it'll come with time. But when I first I'm- started, I couldn't. If I had a death or I had... Mm. You know, somebody was giving me, you know, somebody in the family was giving me grief or something like my morning shows would just blow because it's all I could think about. But then I learned to kind of separate them when I cut on the mic. Yeah, man. But see, on Wednesdays, I mean, I want to like just release all that emotion, just spill my guts. This is exactly what's going on. Like, that's what I want to do. I want to harness all that, you know, stuff I'm going through. But I say I've been a little uh, a little repressed the last few weeks. Just, you know, I don't know, man. I feel like sometimes I feel like my my creative spaces encroached upon and anyway yeah, that's got a lot you got a lot on your mind but anyways we digress big time yeah. but uh derek wraps it up by saying actually the last would be bill simmons podcast it's one uh that has to do with sports thanks for keeping me entertained every day derek thank you so much for uh for listening and support man we really appreciate your you know everything oh, you, you do we, we appreciate all of the all of the conversations everything you're the man and we'll definitely check out your podcast like send us a link on facebook to it yeah, I'd love to check it out. Is that a is that it? That's for it for that Facebook. One? Okay, yeah. well, one more I found on a trending Tuesday. Okay, Eternal Wreck, a, a great patron. We love you, longtime listener. Mail call. What is your opinion on artificial intelligence? Uh, it scares the hell out of me. It really, really does. I mean, 
we're we're going to have a singularity within our lifetime, maybe within a decade or two. Uh, when I say a singularity, I'm talking about a fully conscious, self-aware artificial intelligence. And I guess we're going to find out what its opinion of humanity is, whether whether it's going to give us a thumbs up or a thumbs down. Because, I mean, artificial intelligence can already beat us in chess and probably anything else. So it's smarter than us. And, I, you know, I grew up watching stuff like Terminator. And, yeah, it scares the uh, hell out of me. I, I don't like it. I'm not as worried about it as Jay. Like, I mean, I, yeah, I, I, well, I, I, it does scare me. But like like JP's scared of my drones. Like I've brought in two different yeah. drones. I have I have one little really little one that you know is really you know designed where you can fly it inside and stuff. And then I've got one that you know I take outside and take it up hundreds of feet in the air and stuff. And JP is absolutely terrified of both, even though like they're not even technically artificial intelligence because they, I'm, I'm controlling them. But, um, you know, I mean, yeah, there are times like uh, Elon Musk is talking about hooking up. You know, have you seen this where he's talking about having a human brain hooked to a computer within the next year? Yeah, man. I mean, pretty that kind of scares me. What if the computer starts taking over? Like you see, yeah, well, that's that's the goal yeah. is to merge consciousness with with AI technology, yeah, which yeah. is cool. We could live forever, but it's kind of scary. I mean, would we, though? I, it's it's weird. Like the uh, that's what's going on in a uh, Tony Stark Iron Man right now. Like. Uh, Tony died at the end of what Civil War Two, and you know, of course, they bring him back. But now it's like, am I really Tony Stark, or is this just a digital like uh, download that they put into you know this body? I, I don't know, man. Uh, AI like scares me more than anything. Like, uh, forget about alien. Uh, forget about the Night Circle. About aliens, whatever, man. AI is is really frightening to me, anyway. A lot of people think it's gonna you know bring world peace and all this stuff. And it might. It might by controlling us. Yeah, I was going to say, might, control or just wiping us out. Right. You know? It might bring world peace by obliterating humans or either like, you know, taking over. So yeah. there's that. So, yeah, in that capacity, yes, it does scare me. But yeah, as far as like JP, JP's terrified of everyday electronics. Yeah, I really, uh, I really don't like them. <laughs> but I apologize for yawning. Oh, I do have a, have a little cough button here, but I just rarely hit it. Um, because we're being real on the podcast. On the radio, I do that because that's more efficient. Yeah, but on the podcast, say, man, you're just chilling a, with us. We have an obligation to these mics to be honest, to be real. No doubt. And I try my best to. Like so, I said, it's all about transparency. Make sure to leave a question. Uh, like Cindy left. Uh, uh, those questions were dope. Like, Cindy, I know it's you know hard to probably to keep coming up with those. But if you can leave some more like that, those are my favorites, man. I feel like they're easier to address. Like, right. they're great. But... Any question you have, down to what color boxers JP's wearing, which you and I are the same. We wear more boxer briefs, I believe. Right? Yeah, we yeah. Established dude, in I, other it podcasts. gives you the best of both worlds. Yeah, it we, really does. We've talked about that before. But if you want to know what color boxer briefs JP's wearing, whatever your question is, man, keep Mail Call alive. Like I said, if we have weeks like we did with last Mail Call, we'll keep this thing going. Yeah, I mean, ask our opinion on anything or our, you know. Except politics. I'm really not going to get into politics. I mean, JP I'll, don't mind. Yeah, Jay, I'll, I'll I mean, JP I can. Care. I've never tried to filter jp at least in the sense of you know i mean i might be like you don't drop so many f-bombs because we have right. people that's but i mean like that's why we have the wednesday but i mean as far as you know i mean i don't care you know jp can can discuss politics all he wants but yeah i mean i'm yeah, not gonna yeah, answer yeah, political questions i don't uh i don't care mainly because i hate politics but um it's a dirty animal that's it really sure. is i've seen too many friendships crumble because people can't handle someone having a different opinion than them. That's I half mean, the problem with this country right now. And the world is just the fact that people can't handle it. It's like, you know, who do you support? And you say whoever. And it's just like, well, that's not who I support. How dare you? And then it's just rather than just understanding that, hey, we have differences, of, uh, different opinions. Maybe we can just people don't calmly discuss anything like that. So, yeah, man, I mean, you, you know me. I mean, I'll, I'll share a home with somebody who has complete opposite views on everything for me. No doubt. Pretty much. No so. doubt. Well, that's going to wrap it up for us. Please leave questions. Don't forget, if you are so inclined, you may uh, you know, head over to the uh, Patreon and uh, check it out. Every dollar, we've not pulled anything out of it yet. We're saving up for, number one, a camera so we can make yep. this a video podcast. Eventually, we want two or three cameras because we want to have it to where we'll have split screen, one camera on JP, one on me, and then we'll have one showing kind of both of us. And then, mm -hmm. But at the beginning, we'll be okay with just one for right now. Yeah. Um, and then we also, big, 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 big thing is we want to create some merch that we can in turn give right back yeah, to you. Yeah, that'll probably be the first like withdrawal we make because that, that'll that be a relatively small you know, oh, investment. Yeah, yeah. So that'll, that'll probably be the first withdrawal we make. And 
then you're going to be able to rock some awesome podcasting dead stuff and hopefully take pictures all over the world and send to us. And yeah, we're going to love it. That's what we want. Yep. Spread like a virus. <laughs> so make sure you uh, leave your questions. Check out the Patreon social media. You can follow. I'll give mine first, mainly because mine is so much easier. Uh, you can find me on Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, and Periscope, all with the username I'm Justin Lloyd. That's I'm Justin Lloyd. Uh, two L's in Lloyd. So just uh, L L O I D. No spaces, no commas, no apostrophes, nothing. Uh, and yeah, JP. Uh, JP Slim on Periscope and on Snapchat and J underscore Radsaw on Instagram. I'm going to get more active on social media. I've been slacking. I've been lacking. But uh, yeah, we're going to make it happen. Man, I, I rhyme quite a I bit right there. I say you are a poet and you never even know it. So, that didn't yeah. work. Hit us up. Hit us up. And we'll catch you again uh, next week uh, for, well, actually on Monday as we review uh, Fear the Walking Dead. Hopefully it'll pick up a little bit this week. Yeah, I don't have much hope. I don't either. But uh, we'll Go see ahead. you then. I hope everyone has a wonderful weekend. And uh, just leave us some leave us some questions. Yeah. I'm Justin. Oh, and I'm JP. And we're the Podcasting Dead. Thank you.